Hi everyone! My name is Emily and I'm the Young Adult Librarian at the Rock Island Public Library. And today, since I'm on vacation in real time, I'm pre-recording this. And both of this week's books are available through the Libby app. So if you want to check those out, just go to Libby. If you don't already have it downloaded, you can download the app. Um, this is formerly Overdrive, now Libby. And we're going to be going through a similar process with our Access 360 app, I believe, kind of at the end of summer. So I'm thinking maybe later this month we'll hear more, but we'll, we'll keep you posted. But today, again, both of these books are on Libby, and you only get three checkouts per month. Sorry, three checkouts at a time with Libby. Uh, Hoopla, you get 15 total for the month, um, but with Libby, the way it works is you can have three items at a time. And you can also put holds on books if they're not available. And this first book is One Piece. So we have this manga series on Libby. I don't know that we have that many. I feel like maybe we just have the first three. And that's what this book collects. This is what I was able to get on hold. And this is East Blue. Uh, it's the first three volumes of the series. So this is the beginning of the first arc. And I will say, One Piece has been around for a while, and there's a lot of books. Uh, there's over a hundred, I think. 103, maybe. I was just seeing it advertised. And this series uh, begins with Monkey D. Luffy. And as a kid, he dreamed of being king of the pirates. Now, what happened accidentally when he was young, he ate what was called the gum gum fruit. And this is an enchanted uh, devil fruit, it's called. And it's great in the sense that it can give you basically super powered abilities. But there is a trade off. Um, Luffy, he can stretch really, really far. He can like stretch his limbs and this can come in handy for sure at times. Um, the problem though, uh, the, the trade off here, the, the price, or I suppose just the unintended consequence of consuming devil fruit, uh, he can't swim, which is a problem if you want to be a pirate. But uh, what he does is at the start of this first book, he manages to get a ship and he is able to set off and I mean this is the beginning where you see uh, <laughs> Luffy's sort of, uh, this is red haired shank so his encounter with this guy kind of led to his, his dream of a piratical future. Well, so Luffy, his first crewman, the former infamous demonic pirate hunter, Zolo, and they're going to the Grand Line because supposedly that is where they will find One Piece. And the One Piece is a treasure of just impossibly huge value. It's, it's so, so impossibly like the, the ultimate treasure that you could seek as a pirate. And so somewhere, it's somewhere out there and that's what they're looking for. And <laughs> here's Nami, she soon joins their crew. And she says here uh, in her introduction, uh, when she first meets Luffy, uh, if there's one thing in this world I really hate, it's pirates, but I love money and tangerines. And so she thinks, all right, well, I can kind of maybe uh, use this guy to my advantage. But this is when they encounter uh, Buggy the Clown. And here is that person. So if, if you love pirates but don't like clowns, well, I mean, you could certainly, I don't know that you have to. <laughs> um, certainly, like, I would recommend with most manga series, you do want to start at the beginning. So, yeah, this is uh, Buggy the Clown's first mate. He has a lion tamer. And... I mean, I think if you have a lion at your disposal, maybe you don't need to dress as one also, but that's what this person decided. And I will say, One Piece is kind of famous for the fact that you have these really just striking character designs. Um, the look of the series is, I mean, there's really nothing else quite like it. So I stopped after volume three, to be fair. I will say I've, I've read this much of One Piece and no more. So. I, I will simply observe that I get a little bit annoyed when, and this is true of Bleach, this is true of any shounen manga practically, but when you get these character designs for women where the boobs are as big as their heads, I, I, I don't know. For me, it's just like, why does it need to be like that? Like, these are cool characters, and I don't know. It just, it seems like design-wise, it's not my favorite choice. That's, that's just me, though. So again, 
Like, I, I really like the sort of like art between chapters. That's a lot of fun too. Uh, you get in this collected like edition, it's a three in one. So, I mean, here you get sort of like early sketches, but also you see like pages in black and white that were originally in color when this came out in Shonen Jump. And you get kind of like an explanation of how this works. Like the author gives you some details of designing manga characters and how that process looks. Also, this is a fun little thing you could like copy and cut out. Uh, you could make a treasure theater and you've got like the three main characters as it stands in this first, well, first collection. Uh, this is the first three volumes though. And I will say this is a series I think we have the first three through Libby, but you probably are going to need to get just others in in like physical copy form. If you can't find them when you come here, you can always put them on hold and we'll request them from another library. Our second book this week is Bix. And this is a graphic novel by Scott Chandler. And in this story, you meet Bix Peterbeck, and sorry, first name Leon. From a young age, he loved music, loved playing music, and he was a skilled trumpeter, but again, his dad in particular was a very religious man, and this was at a time when, well, certainly uh, jazz was looked upon as being, certainly, it was popular music. And I think you'll find at a lot of points in history, popular music is equated with sin. So, oh, you're, you're out dancing and drinking and, oh, I don't approve of this. Now, at seven, uh, this is back in 1910, so er, again, early days of this person's life and early on in this book, we find that, I mean, when Bix was seven, he was sort of this prodigy at the piano. And seeing other people approve of his son's talent, okay, this was a rare time when Bix's father also approved of him. So when he was gifted a trumpet, quickly took to this as he had taken to the piano. And after being expelled from college, uh, tried working. Uh, his, his dad, I believe, got him a job. Yeah, it's the East Davenport Coal and Lumber Company. And this was not a good fit, as you can maybe imagine. Um, work this job. There's, there's a few sort of monotonous pages of Bix, like punching a card and doing this work. And this was 1920s when Bix was a young man. And he, after trying his hand at working at this very just monotonous job, did not require any creativity and that was hard. It was, it was not a musical job. Well, hey, guess what? The University of Iowa, they had a music program. So for 1925, uh, wanted to be admitted and he applied and was accepted. So, this uh, <laughs> was something that, in, in pursuing music, well, the problem with this, this program, you see, like, the, the, the class schedule included religion and ethics. And this was something, again, for Bix, he'd grown up in kind of uh, a strict environment, I would say, for sure. Now, that's to a modern viewer. To people at the time, this was seen as just sort of probably a standard thing that, well, of course your, your family doesn't want you playing music and, uh, well, in this case, I mean, Bix, he left Iowa. He, he decided this isn't working anymore. I need to just go and play music and work at that, get jobs where I can. So it's a very interesting graphic novel and it goes, um, you'll, you'll see, again, most of the book is told without words, it's just images. And you see this, you see him in his days of success and enjoying performing, but then later in life, part five, in the dark, you get him trying to be a musician and trying to play, and also just during the Great Depression, struggling to get clean. And in playing the piano, I mean, that helped certainly, but it was just this thing where he, he really, throughout his life, struggled with addiction. And eventually he, you know, you, you see his life, you see it starting in childhood and ending with his death. And this was just somebody who, certainly there are a lot of stories of artists where that's part of their history. That's the, the struggle that they have 
with mental health or substance abuse, okay, that becomes part of the narrative of the suffering artist. But I mean, Bix was somebody who, he, he wanted to make music, and if he'd gotten help, in, I guess more effective health, because again, it was the Great Depression when he was really kind of struggling to get back into music, and there were lots of struggles throughout the Great Depression. There, this was a time in American history where many, many people just didn't have enough food to eat, let alone people at this time, they weren't the best, I would say, at helping with substance abuse issues or dealing with mental health and other types of trauma. There was just this thought of, well, you're drinking too much, you need to stop, but there's there's more to it than that. That's, that's not really a helpful bit of advice for somebody who's really, um, especially at the end of Vix's life, struggling just to keep going. Vix's life was, I mean, he was this brilliant musician and had this short but impactful life in the world of jazz soloists. So if you're interested in the history of this person, check it out. Uh, this was sort of an unconventional biography, but I, I like a graphic novel biography because you get a lot of information about someone in uh, not very many pages, or certainly, in this case, I mean, hardly any words at all. You, you learn about this person's life and really, for the most part, um, just the, the ups and downs of it, but also how music defined this person's life. And thank you for watching. I will see you again next week.